Hello, I'm Keith Coates, service technician, Holland, Michigan. Been with the company for 25 years. What we're gonna talk about today is downforce on your corn planters. Gonna go back to the springs, pneumatic, and with the new hydraulic individual downforce. And why that's important for you with your planter. So the importance of downforce is you wanna get the seed into the ground at an even consistent depth into the soil. One thing you want is you wanna place the seed into moisture what we want at the end is uniform emergence out of the ground. To achieve that, we're gonna use the downforce system on the, on the row unit. So one of the original systems was a spring downforce system. They came in many different ways. The most common is the heavy duty downforce systems. They have four positions, zero pounds, 125 pounds. We have 250 pounds and 400 pounds of downforce that you can put with spring downforce on that planter. So for the next one we've got, we've got the pneumatic downforce system. That's what we've got here on this unit here that we can test. And we're gonna do some demonstrations with that a little bit later. But what this here has got, this has got two settings you can have. You can have set point settings and you can have active pneumatic settings. We'll go a little bit on the set point right now. What that is, is in your monitor, you will have pressure that you want it to sit at it will maintain that pressure. You've got a small compressor either in your tractor cab or on the planter unit itself, and the planter itself. It'll maintain that unit, that pressure that you have set. One thing for that is it will reset the pressure every 30 minutes. There is a timer to it. If you notice on your monitor that your pressure is dropping, you can always hit the set button and that will reset the pressure and you'll see a small arrow on your display indicating that. Okay, so what we've got on the simulator right now is set point pneumatics. As you can see on the simulator, my bars are below my, my target graph. So I've actually only got 25 pounds of downforce. So if I hit the up arrow here, it's gonna go up. On the two different ranks, you're gonna see the small arrows going up. That means that it's charging air. So it's going up, it's trying to meet the, the target. As you can see, my black lines are now even, and now they're going a little bit above as they go up. I can go in and adjust down to try to maintain the target that I feel that I want for my downforce slash, mar slash margin. The other system we have is active pneumatic. There will be a compressor on the planter frame itself, either electric or a hydraulic compressor unit. There will be sensors on the row unit, not on every one across, but maybe four sensors depending on your planter configuration to sense ride quality and the downforce of that row unit. At that point in time, you're gonna put in a margin, and we'll talk more about margin, at, in the planter display, and it's gonna maintain that going across the field. Now with the air system, active pneumatic, you do have to remember that it's a little bit slow, that it will change to different crop, different soil conditions, but it will maintain that margin of the row unit. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about margin and what that actually is. So one of the things for the downforce is actually weight. That's the number one thing when you de determine margin, weight of the row unit. What we've got here in the display is actually a scale. So these row units actually weigh more than one would think. So one thing to determine about when we talk about margin is actually weight of the row unit, what is pressing down on the soil, the downforce of soil, and the soil resistance up. Right now, just a bare row unit, we've got 145 pounds of weight, just a bare row unit. That is no seed on this unit yet. So if you fill this hopper with corn, either you got a 1.5 bushel hopper or a three bushel hopper, that's gonna add a significant amount of weight to this, this unit. So one thing that can affect the margin is actually the closing wheel pressure that you have on it. Right now, there's 19 pounds of pressure weight on this closing wheel, we have a scale on it. If you go to the first notch, now you've got 80 pounds of pressure on your closing wheels. That have taken weight off the, off the gauge wheels, we're now at 96 pounds, and that's just in the first notch. 
If you increase that all the way to the highest notch possible, we have now only have 45 pounds on the gauge wheels versus 124 on the closing wheels. So that makes a significant difference when you're setting your margin is know where your closing wheels actually are and just keep that in mind. So where the margin comes in is actually the resistance of the ground. So we just showed the difference of the row unit and the downforce of this. Now what the other difference would be is the ground itself. What the resistance up of that ground would be. So if we've got 300 pounds of pressure combined with our downforce on this row unit and we've got 100 pounds of ground force forcing up, what would be our margin be? That would be 200 pounds. So the, they use the word margin, but it's a very, very hard number to come with. The best way to check it is to come out, take your gauge wheel while you're planting, or while you've stopped planting, rotate your gauge wheel, and see how much rotation you can get out of it. You should have a fair amount of resistance on that gauge wheel, but you should be able to turn it also. So we're gonna just demonstrate right now, we've got zero air in our airbag, or downforce system. We've got 90 pounds of row unit on our gauge wheels. We got 70 pounds on our closing wheels. So now I'm gonna add some air. And that's only 30 pounds of air pressure in the, in the airbag. And we've increased the row unit to 114 pounds. In the operator's manual, it'll show you a chart. It'll show you your downforce pressure and air pressure, how it relates to the pounds of downforce. That is in your operator's manual, and it's a very good reference to know. Now we're gonna go to active pneumatic. So I can, on this planner, before I chose to have set point. This planner does also have the active pneumatic option. So I'll turn that on, go to my screen, click enable active downforce. Now the planner is going to take the information it's getting from the row sensors and put that into the, into the active pneumatic. As you can see, it's climbing up. My bars are coming up to where I want it. Now I've got black bars. So the one thing that I talked about is ride control. I'll click on that. And this here is ride, is ride quality. Right now I'm running 92% on this row for ride quality. That's good. If you're over 100%, the system does not have the ability to know if you're at 110 or 120%. So you, if your margin or your downforce is too high, what you're gonna do is actually force that unit into the ground and you're gonna start wearing out components as long and compacting your seat trench where you're gonna start getting poor emergence due to a compacted seat trench. Okay, now what we're gonna, on our simulator, is we're gonna demonstrate the individual row downforce system, which is the hydraulic downforce system on the John Deere corn planters. This is available in the 5, 5 ME, the electric drive planter, or the exact emerge planter. This is a great option because this, the individual row downforce, just like it states, it is hydraulically downforce, individual row. There's a feedback sensor on every single row. It's very fast to make the calculations for the downforce. One of the calculations in margin, one of the factors that comes into it is speed. As our planning speed increases with the exact emerge planner, we need to maintain the downforce to get that seed emergence out of the ground equally through the whole planting field. On our simulator here, you can see that we've actually got the downforce up, up in the up, upper portion. Right now we've got downforce margin at 100 pounds. This is still in a set point procedure that you can do with the hydraulic. You can go through and increase it up. I just went to 110. As you can see how quickly the bars come up that we're actually above the gate, or what we have set for the alarms for our, our downforce. Here again, you've got your downforce. And here, I just clicked on the ground contact. We are at 100% ground contact for every single row. Now the simulator doesn't quite do exactly what we want, but if on your corn planter you would see this bounce, this would be too much. What you'd want to do is drop that contact down so you start seeing 96 to 98% ground contact for the rows as an average. 
So as I said, we're in set point. Now I'm going to switch it to the downforce, the active. Now you can see my bar is coming back down. They're going to meet that target as it goes. Our ground contact is still at 100%. There again, our simulator just kind of works that way that it's going to be stuck at 100%. But I can go in and I can increase this margin, target margin. See how it quickly comes back up and I can just about get a flat line bar for my downforce target on this. It's a very easy way to figure out margin. There's really no car calculations when you got ride quality with the active pneumatic or the ground contact with the IRHD. And this concludes our presentation on the downforce systems and the John Deere corn planters. If you need any further assistance or have questions, contact anyone at the Greenmark locations near you. Mm -hmm.